our story opens today under the big top of Ringeding Brothers Circus. Ringeding Brothers presents, for the first time anywhere, the great Fettuccini in a death-defying triple somersault into a damp handkerchief. One, two, three. Ooh. Uh-oh. He missed the handkerchief. Hey, that does it. I'm a quit. How come, Fettuccini? Because of that hurt. You didn't tell me it was gonna hurt. Well, I guess we get a new trapeze act. Don't be silly. Where are we gonna find anybody else stupid enough to try a triple somersault into a damp handkerchief? Of, of course. course. George, George of, of the, the jungle. jungle. And so it was that those two arch criminals, Tiger and Weevil, soon had a new nefarious scheme to carry out. Neat, eh, Tiger? For shipping George of the Jungle to the new 90 stage, we get 10,000 clams. I'd still rather be paid in real money. Arr! Money can be trace changed. So can 10,000 clams, especially at low tide. Meanwhile, unaware of the impending danger, the Jungle Monarch surveyed his tropical umpire. That tropical empire? Whatever. Suddenly, his keen ears picked up the sound of a lady in distress. <coughs> lady in distress, George, go! Little did George know it was all a dastardly trick. Help! Mother! Police! This has been a recorded message. <coughs> okay, listen. <coughs> That's George now. How can ye tell? Call it a lucky guess. Is the trap ready? <laughs> Ready, CD Tiger. <laughs> All right. Now. <laughs> you left the back open. When will you learn to keep your trap shut? <laughs> we're safe, Weevil. He's out cold. What? That? I say we're safe. You're out. Now that tropical umpire. Within minutes, the ape man was loaded onto a bamboo pole and on his way to the coast. Not fair to take George out of jungle. Jungle is George's element. And speaking of elements, there he was, trusting faithful Shep. That's elephant, not element. Well, it's too late now. And a good doggy, Shep. Sick him, boy. Faster, Weevil. He's gaining on us. <laughs> Once again, we see that dog is man's best friend. If he weighs 3,000 pounds, he'd better be. But undaunted, the wily duo were still determined to capture the noble jungle lord. You bet your goony bird we are. Be this here pit deep enough now, tiger? Yes. Let's cover it up, and I'll put the record on. Once again lured by the false distress cry, George dashed toward the concealed pit. <laughs> but just before George set foot on the trap... Oh! A lion! Run! This way! No! Not this way! Oh, hi, Leon. Long time no titi. Crikey! Even the lions be on his side. Leon, oh, George, favor. George once took Thorn from his paw. Right, Leon? A fierce African storm raged all that night, and by dawn had poured down enough water to float the two villains out of their pit. I've been treading water so long, I've got webbed feet. How about you, Weevil? But 10,000 clams is 10,000 clams, and that very afternoon found the blackguards skulking beneath George's treehouse. George, how can you be so sure that Tiger and Weevil have gone? George, see no Weevil, hear no Weevil, speak no Weevil. He's disappeared. I don't blame him. You beasts, what did you do? We came, we sawed, we conked him. Let's make tracks, Weevil. And so it appeared that the villains finally had George in their oily clutch. Ape, we must do something. I should think so. That hole makes a frightful draft. Things look dark for our hero. That much better. Now George call for help from animal friends. 
<laughs> what be that? You see, any minute now, Mbwiggy, the rhinoceros, come to rescue. Sure enough, the bushes at the side of the road parted, and there came charging out of them not a rhino, but a giant man-eating mulberry berry bush. See more. How about that? George called for Mwiggy, get Mtwiggy. The fierce plant set to work and demolished the villain's jeep. Then it demolished the villain. We give up. Even the ready plants are on your side. Sure. Seymour owed George favor. You mean? Yes. George once took paw from his thorn. So the villains had to depart empty-handed. And now we shall never know whether George could actually do a triple somersault into a damp hanky. <laughs> the answer is no. When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking, <laughs> there is someone waiting who will hurry up and rescue you. Just call for super chicken. But if you're afraid, you'll have to overlook it. Besides, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. He will drink his super sauce and throw the bad guys for a loss, and he will bring them in alive and kicking. <laughs> there is one thing you should learn when there is no one else to turn to. Call for super chicken. Call for super chicken. <laughs> one children's birthday party is pretty much like another. First, there is the singing. Happy birthday, dear Billy Joe Richards. Happy birthday to you. Then comes the blowing out of the candles, the opening of the presents, and the robbery. Robbery? Yes, robbery. <laughs> my teddy bear is gone. <laughs> so is my TV set. Call the police. It was too late. Once outside, the teddy bear climbed into a giant toy helicopter with a mysterious pilot at the controls, and they disappeared into the sky. Two hours later, the birthday bandit struck again. Look, Mommy, a talky Tilly doll. Pull the string and see what she says. Where do you keep the silverware? In the cupboard. Thank you. Stay where you are. This is a stick-up. And with that, the talky Tilly doll went to the cupboard, put the silverware into a bag, and left through the open window. The birthday bandit struck again and again. A clown doll stole a sofa. A toy monkey swiped a pearl necklace. And a rubber ducky made off with a grandfather's clock. Each time, the toys escaped in the mysterious wind-up helicopter. <laughs> the police were powerless to stop them. How come you guys are powerless to stop them? If you think I'm going to arrest a rubber ducky, you're out of your mind. But there was a certain chicken who wasn't powerless. For Henry Cabot Henhouse III, otherwise known as Super Chicken, was hard at work on the case. Happy birthday, dear Fred. Happy birthday to you. But, Mr. Henhouse, it's not my birthday. I know that, Fred. This is a trick. Who are we fooling besides me? The birthday bandit. You mean we're going to arrest the rubber ducky? No, we're going to get the brains behind the rubber ducky. That's a funny place for brains. Going on with the fake birthday party, our clever heroes whooped it up. Whoop, whoop. whoop. They kept whooping it up for two weeks until finally... Happy birthday to you. Hooray. I don't think it's going to work, Mr. Henhouse. Why not? The cake's gone, I've had 600 glasses of punch, and my paper hat's got a hole in it. But then suddenly... I'll get it. Hey, look, a big package. Opening the package, Henry discovered a six-foot terry cloth chicken hawk. But the terry cloth chicken hawk also discovered Henry and grabbed him in a vice-like grip. Does this look like a job for super chicken? I thought you'd never ask, Fred. You get the super sauce, the hawk and I will go change into my super suit. Hmm. Now that's what I call real... The super sauce went to work immediately and transformed the simple bird into a complex super chicken. Take cover in the kitchen, Fred. I'm going to blast him with my terry cloth hawk missile. Pointing his mighty wing at the hawk, Super Chicken fired. Did you miss or did the stove blow up? Before Super Chicken could even say, no time to explain, the hawk struck. <laughs> but terry cloth is no match for an enraged Super Chicken. Breaking away, the hawk blew out the window. 
It's getting away. Exactly. Exactly? It's part of my super plan. We'll follow him, and he'll lead us to the brains behind the rubber ducky. To the super coop. Roger Wilcock. And our heroes took to the air. <laughs> now our scene changes to the huge toy factory of Salvador Ragdolly, a power-mad toy maker. Building toys to rob birthday parties will make me the richest crooked toy maker in the world. Of course, there is very little competition. But just then, there was a cry in the sky. <laughs> that must be the terry cloth hawk with the hen house fortune. Super chicken! Where? Where? You're super chicken! Right, and don't you forget it. Why not? Uh, you did. Salvador Ragdolly, you're under arrest. You are the brains behind the rubber ducky. You will never get me, Super Chicken! Give me one reason why not. Because a Super Chicken cannot defeat another Super Chicken. That's a pretty good reason. What does it mean? The crooked toy maker showed them. He opened a large box, and there stood a toy chicken drinking Super Sauce. The Super Sauce quickly went to work and transformed the common wind-up toy chicken into an uncommon wind-up toy, Super Chicken. Striking first, the toy super chicken fired a lightning bolt ray. Yow! Who can play at that game? Yow! Hmm, fighting myself is going to be tougher than I thought. Especially on me. Stand back, Fred. I'm going to ram him with my booster boots. Bending over, super chicken lit the rockets on his booster boots. But the toy super chicken did the same thing, and they streaked toward each other at incredible speed. Unfortunately for Salvador Ragdolly, he was standing between them, and when they came together... The winner and still champion, Super Chicken? After summoning the police, Fred headed the Super Coop homeward. Birthday bandit and henchman jailed. What do you say to that, Super Chicken? I am a Super Chicken dolly, and this is a recording, recording, recording. Whoops. So when you hear a different kind of cry in the sky... <laughs> you'll know I picked the wrong dummy. Ooh. Welcome to the scorching sand dunes of Hotfoot Desert in northern Africa. This is the scene of the annual dune buggy race, sponsored by international sportsman Sanford Nitty, inventor of Nitty Grits, the breakfast food spurned by millions. Favorite in today's race is, of course, all-around champion and snappy dresser, Tom Slick. Yay! Yes, Marigold, I've converted the Thunderbolt grease slapper to a sand dune buggy. Oversized tires, lowered gear ratio, and the darlingest little fringe on top. I see you've added two feet to her, too, Tom. I have? Yes, they're sticking out from underneath. Who's there? It is only I, Effendi, your humble servant. How you been, booby? How you been, booby? Ain't you the sneaky sheik from Leaky Creek? You've heard of me. I heard you were a two-timing, low-down, cheating scoundrel. Isn't it remarkable how good news gets around? What were you doing under my car? I was merely taking a short nap out of the glare of the sun. Hurts my eyes, something fierce. Oh, well, that's all right, then. You may go. Did you notice, Tom? His hands were all oily. So was his manner, Marigold. Now stand back, girls. It's post time. Good luck, Tom. Thanks, Marigold. You're a pal, good and true. Is that all, Tom? No, you're also a public-spirited citizen. Oh, Tom. Cut the mushy talk, kids. The racers are approaching the starting line. And uh, there they go. At the first tune, it's the sneaky sheik in front in the squat wheel camel choker. And uh, Tom Slick is a poor lass. Oh. Rick 
gobs of goo. My oil pressure is down to zero. I knew it. That sneaky sheik took out Tom's crankcase drain plug. Quick, Gertie, let's take this oil drum. And beat it? You had to say it, didn't you? Guided by a trail of oil spots, Gertie and Marigold set out to wave Tom. Miles ahead, the sneaky sheik is protecting his lead. But here come the others. What is this? The sheik is dragging something behind him. It's a sand rake. <coughs> oh, dirty pool, dirty pool. Well, dusty pool anyways. Now the sneaky sheik turns a lever. The rake flips over and he jettisons the sand rake in the path of the oncoming cars. Blinded by dust, they cannot see it and... Uh-oh, it's blowouts for everybody. Of course, I don't play favorites. But what of Tom Slick? I've replaced the drain plug. Fill her up with oil, Gertie. Now, Tom, on to victory, on to glory. I'm supposed to go to Benghazi. Tom Slick is back in the race, folks. Yay! But he has a long way to go. Especially since he should be running out of gas right about now. The sneaky sheik is right, folks. It looks bad. But what's this? Just the head of Tom and Osis. That's Oasis. Whatever. Last chance garage and service station. Fill her up, sir. Gonna be kind of hard to do, sonny. How's that? Somebody punched a hole in your gas tank as big as a half dollar. Confound that sneaky sheik. I've got to plug it up. You got a half dollar? No, but I've got two quarters. They'll have to do. His tank repaired and refilled, Tom zooms out of the last chance garage. Uh, but what is happening? That garage, it's disappearing. Of course it is, Sonny. This here garage ain't real. It's just a trick played by the desert sun. You mean? Yep, it's a mirage garage. Tom is gaining, Gertie. Go, 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 Tom boy. Tom Slick, what are you doing here? My job, Sneaky Sheik. Proving that cheaters can't win. Yeah. Yay! In that case, I'm forced to use my instant quicksand pills. Quicksand pills? Yes, quicksand pills. Uh-oh, the sheik is sprinkling quicksand pills on the desert floor ahead of Tom. The sand is softening up. The grease slapper is slowing down. She's slowing down. Now she's going down. I hate to say it, but that sneaky sheik is not a good sport. And as Tom sinks slowly in the west, the sheik heads for the finish line. But wait, over the horizon comes a rescue helicopter. Yay! Steady, hon. Ooh. Hang on to the steering wheel, Tom boy. Pick her up, Marigold. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Thank <laughs> Thanks for the lift, girls. The sneaky sheik looks like a sure winner, but wait. Charging over the dunes like an avenging aardvark comes good guy Tom Slick. In the stretcher on it's Tom Slick. It's the sneaky sheep. It's Tom. It's the sheep. It's, it's, it's over. Yes, but who won? Yeah, yeah. who won? Who melts? Tom Slick. Yay! Yes, this beautiful trophy now goes to... Direction. This beautiful trophy now goes, period. This sneaky sheik is stealing the trophy. He's heading for that brick wall. Brick wall? In the middle of the desert? Don't be silly. I know a mirage when I see one. But, Tom, how did a brick wall get in the middle of the desert? Let's just call it a desert mystery, Marigold. On second thought, let's just call it a heck of a lot of hard work. 